right, everybody, I've got an incredible vibrant visionary today. We've been uh, email friends <laughs> for a while, but now he's on. He's got his Hawaiian shirt on, so if you're watching on video, you can see that <laughs> on the YouTube vibrant, channel. Boy. It's very vibrant. Um, welcome, Jonah Blackman. Welcome, Jonah. Thank you, Heidi. So wonderful to be here with you. Oh my gosh. I am so excited to talk with you. The reason I, I started Vibrant Visionaries is because I just wanted to talk with other like-minded folks, people who aren't on one singular creative path, but just can't say no to a life that's quite diverse and interesting. So just uh, tell me a little bit about your life. How do you spend your time? What do you do? What do your weeks or months look like? What's <laughs> what? Because <laughs> you do all sorts of different things. I do. I do. <laughs> um, yeah. Gosh, just jumping in. I, you know what? I I started off as a dancer as a child. Um, you know, and stepped into acting uh, really, really young. Training for film and television, um, starting when I was about eleven years old, and I moved down to Los Angeles when I was sixteen. Um, I was flying back and forth and finally started landing some work and my parents were like, okay, you can move down and, um, and started my, you know, film and television career at that point. Um, and then continued on, you know, I, I began to produce, I produced, uh, some queer films, uh, the another gay movie series or franchise, um, and, and then also continued to just shepherd stories. Uh, so much of the work I've done has been, you know, from the first film I ever did, uh, This Boy's Life, I played a queer character um, kissing Leonardo DiCaprio. And that was at a time in 93 um, when that came out where there weren't, you know, young there weren't young queer representation in any film or TV um, at that point. And so it really became clear to me through my life experience and taking on other roles and realizing the industry, how it was either for me or not for me in playing queer characters and, and how out I was or not was. Um, all of those, those aspects sort of uh, was a real journey, but it kind of... Uh, through making choices and decisions to to be more mission driven than necessarily um, fitting myself into some box uh, for for some kind of career that I don't know how fulfilled I would be doing um, or not. Um, I I decided, you know, to champion queer stories. And I did it as an actor and I did it as a producer now. And, um, and then I also help as a, as a publicist and help champion really marginalized stories. I work with the, um, disability community. Uh, I've, I've worked with many different kind of independent films, um, and documentaries and streaming services that are really niche in this world. But I have to say that much of them really go towards helping marginalized voices. That, no, it's, it's just, you put it all so well. And I think, um, I, when I coach clients, we're always talking about how to design their vibrant vision, how to use their values and their missions and their goals to, yeah, live a vibrant life so that you don't end up you know, charging down a career path and realizing like, oh, yeah, this is nothing like <laughs> this is nothing important to me. It just just happened and I stumbled into it and it's years later and I'm not working in anything that's that matters to me. So I can see how um, that example is just how you make those decisions based on what's what what's important to you, what is most and to say marginalized voices, it's like that's w two words, but it means like such a broad, wonderful spectrum of people. Uh, what kind of projects are you doing right now that are representative of that or that you'd like to spotlight or highlight today? You know what? As an actor, I have a lot of things that are coming out for me right now, which is really exciting because it's work that I've done. I mean, some of it I... We're having the 15th anniversary of a film that I did called Another Gay Movie, which was a real 
um, cult classic in its day um, that really uh, kind of blew the water out of, it was, you know, like a queer American pie or porkies, Mm -hmm. which we'd never really had before. And uh, we're celebrating the 15th, you know, uh, year uh, uh, and, and it's been a re-release and there's a director's cut and Mink Stoll is, uh, her scene has been added back into the film. Um, and that's coming out at the end of April. Awesome. Um, so that's, you know, something from the past, um, uh, you know, a, a, an outrageous comedy. And then I have another film right now that's at South by Southwest uh, that is, is playing South by Southwest and will be playing all the film festivals. And that's a wonderful drama that um, is really more generational, starring Udo Kier, uh, who is just a wonderful uh, actor who many people may remember him from My Own Private Idaho. He's, he's the German with the crazy eyes who has done over 200 films um, and really never the, uh, the lead. And this is a, a story, it's called Swan Song. And it's a story of a man at the end of his life um, looking to uh, to really just kind of come full circle um, in, in his story. And uh, it, it's a, a great character. Uh, and, and so and I got to work with him and, and Jennifer Coolidge and mm-hmm. Michael Urie. Linda Evans came out of... Um, her dynasty cocoon <laughs> That's awesome. for the first time in 30 years. And that um, is just a powerful, wonderful, small little independent film um, that will be having its life. Um, and I, I just love that it, again, it were, it's, it's just a different generation um, and really speaks to um, someone in their later years and, and what life is, is like now. Um, and then I, you know, I have a silly, really kind of wild uh, comedy, uh, dark comedy called Pet Peeves, which is going to be playing uh, on on Reverie. Um, and that's a, a series that uh, I get to play this really eccentric uh, pet clairvoyant, pet psychic, newly <laughs> out of prison. So a bit of a Luddite uh, who, who doesn't have, um, who isn't so technologically savvy. It really doesn't really, you know, has been in prison for a little while. Um uh, but has these these skill sets, and that's coming out on National Pet Day, April eleventh. <laughs> awesome. um, and and you know it's a it was a great exploration into what are the lives of people with their pets, and what are our pets really trying to tell us? Um, and, and 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 there's just so much to explore and and unpack there. So, you know, that was sort of the animal kingdom world. Um, and then I have a film that's coming out later this year. That's a film called Claw, which is a horror comedy, a whole other genre realm um, that has, you know, dinosaurs in a, in, in a modern day, um, <laughs> which is just out, 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 outlandish. Um, so, I mean, that's, you know, work right now for me that kind of hits all of these different, um, I want to say aspects of, of um, certainly genre and generation and, and, you know, it's, it's all about some kind of relationship, right? What, 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 what are we getting to play with? And I, I'm a very curious human being. Uh, I'm curiously excited to, to, to explore the outer world and the inner world. Um, you know, meditation has been a part of my life since I was 18 years old every single day. Um, and, you know, I, I wake up always wanting to really be of service in some capacity, whatever my, whatever reason I'm here, may I be doing that? May I be living that? And may I be, you know, supporting those who I'm supposed to support um, and, and, you know, trying to experience some kind of full potential here. Uh, and that, that feels really clear to me. So I live with that every day. <laughs> How does ritual pay a, play a part in helping you organize your day or your thoughts? You mentioned meditation. Is that something you do at a certain time of day? Are there certain rituals or things that help ground you to to work in your many different ways? Well, yeah, I, I, every morning it's the first thing I do um, is is I'll I'll meditate for 20 minutes. And for many years I I did it at night too, before I went to bed kind of as a clean slate. Um, but now it's really pretty much uh, 
just, you know, morning. And then I'm also really physical. I've still, I still dance. Um, it, it, that's, that's been imprinted in me. So I, I, I have to physically do something usually uh, in, in the mornings. And that also is before I enter into the world so that I have, you know, kind of exhausted. I, I've been able to check into my mind and see what my thoughts are. <laughs> um, and and then, you know, kind of checked into my body and see where my body's at uh, and, and kind of hopefully exhaust all of that <laughs> and uh, and then get to enter the day. Yeah. I think that's a really great. Um, yeah, it's so interesting how everybody starts their day a different way. And it's a good thing to, I think, to put out there just as a reminder to folks that you can always change up your routine. Maybe you get used to, I used to put out a podcast every single day for a limited time. (laughs) It was a movies by minutes podcast. So each day we talk about the next minute in the movie is like really diving deep into this is spinal tap. Oh my God. How awesome. Um, So each morning, like I had prompted myself, you know, you get up and before I even got out of bed, I'm like on my phone you know, making sure it downloaded correctly and is out in the world and promoting it and doing this and doing that. And and when I was completed, that project was completed, I had to remind myself, okay, you don't need to start that way every day. And yeah, that you can start meditating or um, moving or, you know, how, how that can support your mental clarity, how that can support just your attitude. And then like you said, you're, te- te- you're touching, you're getting in touch with your insides, you're getting in touch with your physical body. And that can really inform so many decisions throughout the day. And like the, the meditation that I do, I, I um, use the Headspace app. And he's always reminding you like, hey, you can, you know, later on today, you can always like, take a moment and just sit and think, you know, you don't have to put the app back on. but can always just kind of recenter yourself anytime and and that habit just helps me remember to check in am i hungry do i need a nap do i need some water um and yeah especially with the body i think i like meditating first and then moving cuz meditating i get to recognize or notice like oh there's a little sore here or oh this needs a little stretch or oh i better you know <laughs> take a little pain reliever cuz i got to Hitch in my, I was going to say hitch in my get along. I think that's something my grandma used to say. <laughs> hitch in my get along? Hitch in my get along. <laughs> I love that. Uh, um, but yeah. Well, you know, I, I found the two that, you know, especially during the pandemic, it, you know, where it, just the working out in the morning really has saved my, you know, saved me because I, I do get to kind of sweat out you know, anxiety, uh, just tension from working also so much work. I, I feel like I've never been busier than during this pandemic. Um, I've had an incredible amount of work and, and a lot of it being on the computer. So just it, it helps, again, move things around and not keep me so stagnant or just, you know, self-care is, is, is ongoing. There, there's no, it's just, it's, you know, I, I live with myself <laughs> every yes. day yes. And, and have to, you know, work with the thoughts that I have, the feelings I have, the, um, where I'm at physically, all of those, those things. And, and I, it's amazing how much control we actually do have, you know, from the food that we eat and all the things that we do. It's, it's, um, and I think over the years, I just have learned so much, you know, about how much, how affected I do get, you know, by food or caffeine or this or that or whatever it is. It's um, it's just something that um, is speaking something to me, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm, I'm in a relationship with. And um, but the working out has definitely and that has really been definitely kicked up because we're all, you know, I'm. I'm basically living, just living at home at this stage. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh, something that I also really find very helpful, and I've I've gotten to spend a lot of time in a lot of different religious um, traditions. 
I kind of grew up without the stigma uh, as a reformed Jew, uh, without any real stigma around my sexuality being so shamed. Um, and I've spent time in Methodism, uh, Buddhism, uh, even some yogic experiences for a, a chapter um, for a, a long period of, uh, in my life. But I've spent, I've kind of come back to my Judaism over the last really four or five years. And I've really enjoyed um, Shabbos, you know, having, you know, just the concept of having one day where you you do unplug, you do turn off, you don't focus on work. Um, and, and, and in just being able to maintain and pace through life, uh, you know, having something like that to kind of go back to, it just got, it has such practical um, implications to it that has been really something I've, I've kind of brought more and more into my life um, and, and appreciate. So ritualistically, uh, you know, that's something that has really, been lovely for me too i have to say yeah that's that's really nicely put um i was listening to a podcast where they were discussing judaism and some of the rituals and some of the different holidays and things and i pardon me because i'm not going to remember right off the top of my head but where you have a certain time of year where you ask for forgiveness yeah the high holidays yeah a wonderful i I know you know there's it's like um catholics go to confession right and jews have yom kippur um and yom kippur is this you know one day out of the year uh that you really step into all that you want to be forgiven for. Um, and it, you know, and you're fasting during that time. So you are kind of really getting to physically on the outside and on the inside, you know, really be engaged in some kind of unique way. Um, and yeah, that's, that, that's a powerful experience, you know, any kind of redemption, (laughs) or processing for uh, forgiveness, all of those things are just a part of what process is. Um, in Orthodox, in Judaism, I say Orthodoxy because I did spend some time really stepping into Orthodoxy at, at a period in my life. Um, there's something called Hakma Bina Das. And Hakma is, is it's, the, it's, it's considered the process of, of, of life in a certain way. Um, Hakma is... It's the female energy. I'm sorry, it's the male energy. Um, It is the inspiration. Uh, It is, it's, it's, it's very, it's something like when people come to Los Angeles, if they're um, actors, they'll get here the first week and they'll book something right away. You know, totally, I didn't think anything about it. It, All this stuff came, it just happened. And then boom, that's Hakma. That's like um, uh, just this spark of inspiration. And then there's... uh, Bina. Bina is the is the female energy. That is the the uh, the birth, in, which is really you know nine months of incubation and and gestation and getting to a place where you can get back to that moment. And so in that process, you'll find you know you came to LA, you get that first job, and then nothing for like. A year, two years, a year, you know, I thought I was supposed to be here. I thought the universe wanted me and, and now nothing. And it, it's sort of this process where you kind of have to work to get back to what that first inspiration was, which is DOS. And when you get to that place and you get that job again, two years later or whenever that is, uh, you've kind of completed a full circle of, of what the real process is, which is the sense of an inspiration to, to really get to something that you really want. And then the work that it takes to actually get there, then you do accomplish it, but you realize what it really took to get um, to get there. And, and that to me, I, I think is so, um, it's just such a great idea of what process is. And, and I, I, I bring this up just because I think of, um, you know, redemption or forgiveness is such a big part of getting through any kind of uh, 
really issue in life. Um, you, you look at the 12 steps, you look at any kind of uh, really any of the major religions, there is something to, you know, you become broken in some capacity and then you, you have to kind of put it back together. And then once it is put together or, or forgiven or, or understood, then you're at this other place, this other place in the process where you can move on, you can use it, you can alchemize it into um, it, it, to work for you. You know, for me, being queer as a kid was, uh, you know, a bit of a curse uh, that inevitably became something once I really did get to embrace it uh, has been something that has been a huge blessing for me and and what I can give and what I can do here. Um, And it it is it's always that, you know, your curse is is likely your gift. (laughs) They're they're connected somewhere. Um, It's just a matter of being able to go through the process of working yes, with it. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, and the redemptive, I, I did not, I was brought up with kind of the golden rule, you know, do unto others, etc., but not in a religious, f- organized religion at all. I mean, I dabbled, I visited, I, you know, picked up things, of course, like you do with friends yeah. and family and stuff. And I and I feel like one of the things that's been of interest to me personally when I coach people, creative people, and when I have conversations with friends, and then when I'm listening to myself and experiencing and trying to give myself nurturing self-care and self-compassion, is that there's such um, an innate sense for so many people, it seems, of of guilt, even if they can't quite pinpoint what it's, they're feeling guilty for or what, even, and this is something I've been working on and, and, and you know, working through and doing the work, as they say, but I still feel like sometimes I'll just be enjoying myself, you know, just having a lovely time and all of a sudden I'll feel this tightness and think, guilty feelings that I don't, I, I'm kind of, I, I like the idea that in, in different religions, there are redemptions and, and the idea of being able to go like, yeah, like in the 12 step program, I know that's a part of that too, where you go and ask forgiveness and then kind of hopefully are able to wipe, wipe the slate clean. And I'm just, that's an area I'm curious to to search more for, to to help myself, to help others, is to discover how we can dissipate and break that up more easily. Because I feel like it truly my my calling personally, I feel like, and there are many as a many many creative person, but one of them is to help people really recognize how self compassion can unlock more of their creative power and unleash them to the world to do, like you said, kind of take what feels broken or what I sometimes call like your proclivities or your things that just make you you and synthesize them, like you said, into kind of your magic powers, your superpowers. And that if you're able to be less hard on yourself, more loving towards yourself, then you make room for yourself in your life. And during the pandemic, I've tried to make more room for myself and my process Mm-hmm. And realize, like, yeah, there's still, yes, you're a generous, loving person to other people, but you still sometimes can spend so much time. And I'm a connector of people, too, so I really like to connect the dots. And, you know, like this morning, I, I saw some job listings and, you know, sent them off to some different people. I thought, oh, this might be something you're interested in, or this reminded me of you or whatever. And it's great to have that. And I love doing that. But I have to, like, I feel like I need to put a post-it note up that says, but do that to you as well. <laughs> like, it's okay to feed that to you and to, like, go, oh, how might this be of service to you, Heidi? What can you learn? Or how, you know, what opportunity might this be for you? But that I automatically kind of do it for other people's first, people first. And so even without awareness that self-compassion, self-care, self-love can really be part of the process, that, it, that there's still this innate feeling of like guilt if you work on yourself versus helping other people. 
that's you what know, I just kind of thought of. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it, it's it's just bringing consciousness to that, right? Your awareness. Oh my God, you know what? I'm not as compassionate with myself as I am with others, right? I'm not as aware of like necessarily taking as good care of myself as I easily can with others, you know, I mean, and, and absolutely, you know, and when that imbalance is there, it, 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 it when that becomes an imbalance, it becomes, you know, you, you realize, oh, wow, you know, I'm, I, I, uh, I mean, I remember even in relationships I've had where people were loving me way more than I was loving myself. And I, I was pushing them away because I couldn't even handle that they would be loving me more than I was loving myself, you know? Um, and I didn't want to, I didn't want to push them away. I didn't want to not be loving myself, but I had to, I had to, 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 to find that balance. I had to start loving myself in, in ways that I didn't even realize I wasn't right. Yeah. So, bringing consciousness into the, those areas. And I think when you do, when you are aware, then, then you get to take actions around it. You know, it, it is, it's all a muscle, you know, the thoughts are muscles. <laughs> um, uh, and, and we're, we're, you know, we're constantly thinking thoughts and, 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 uh, and, and those are just literally running us in so many ways. And so having, you know, having a new thought about, you know what, I actually kind of deserve this or, you know, it starts to break open um, awareness around, oh, you know, I, I am not as compassionate with myself as maybe I am with others. Okay. Now, how can I actually be more compassionate? How can I keep that in the, on my desktop, if you will, <laughs> you know, the desktop of my mind, I always say I, I, I can keep things more on my desktop, but my hard drive, my memory is, you know, it, it's a, uh, I, I use a lot of it on my on my on my desktop. Right, uh, right. But you know, it, it is a muscle of like, oh, okay, I gotta go back to that. Um, I gotta, oh, I, I I was just not really generous with myself. Okay, I'm not gonna beat myself up for that. I'm gonna just notice that and maybe next time, okay, I'm gonna you know, there's that story um that what is it? It's um I'm walking down a street, uh uh, I'm walking down the street. I see a, a pothole. I fall in the pothole. I'm walking down the street. I see the pothole. Um, I fall back into the pothole. I'm walking down the street. I see there's a pothole. I think, oh, I shouldn't walk into it. But I walk into it. I fall into the pothole. And then, oh, I'm walking down the street. I see a pothole. I shouldn't walk into it. I'm going to veer off. I didn't walk into the pothole it's like it takes so these steps it takes these these incremental little things you know to actually shift our own behavior our behavior our thoughts all of those things but they are um i mean i grew up with uh, i grew up with a lot of discipline when i was a kid um and especially when I was dancing, I, I, when I was, I started dancing when I was three I started working with the San Francisco ballet when I was six and it was like this Russian, you know, hardcore, if you're real, you, you train, this is what we do. You know, it's very specific. And there were things that I did not want to be doing, but I learned so much by, and I excelled, I kind of thrived in that discipline because it gave me some framework to see a difference, to see improvement, you know, and it, it, it inevitably what it really made me realize was, well, if I am consistent with something. If I make a practice, there's, there's going to be a change. Um, and, and that's, it'll, and, and things are not really neutral. <laughs> things are either moving towards better or they're moving towards worse. <laughs> you know, <laughs> there isn't like a neutral kind of, um, because things are constantly moving. Our body is constantly moving. Our body's regenerating every seven years. I think every cell in our body is, becomes different. It's like, it's, it's, um, it is, it is, it's amazing. So yeah, now I'm just rambling, but no, those are really, I mean, we could talk for hours and, and if we weren't on a time crunch today, I would happily just continue on this because this is the part of the creative process I think is so fascinating is to talk about like, the, the pothole and just that that is a practice. It is 
um, moving the needle forward a little bit. It is being okay with yourself when you recognize you're a little wobbly at something and then just recommitting to it. And then sometimes adjusting away from something, you realize this isn't my path. I'm not going to be a dancer or I'm going to do it as a hobby, but not as a career. Um, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, we can always be adjusting our mindset. We can always be learning new habits. And and um, I mean, those are the, the goody, the good takeaways from it is, yeah, and that you can always restart right in this moment if you give yourself that opportunity. So yeah, so speaking of this moment, let's wrap it up for today. But it was just so so wonderful to put your face to the name of the signature of the emails. <laughs> and is there anything else you'd like to do or uh, uh, something to plug or, or places people can follow you, um, social handles, etc.? I just started my Instagram literally last week or a week and a half ago. <laughs> so <laughs> people are welcome to uh, find me at, at Jonah Blackman. as simple as that. Um, and certainly able to reach out in any ways. Um, otherwise, Facebook, I guess. Um, yeah, no, that that's that's really it. I I, I hope everyone who, um, who who's who's listening or watching, um, you know, certainly can can relate. I feel like these are all such you know this this is just the human drama. Totally, the, the human experience. Um, and I, I know that creatively, um, it, it's it's like yeah. I, I feel like I get to be creative because I have gone into things that I have that have absolutely scared me, or have uh, I felt cursed by. Um, and once on the other side uh, is like all of this create vibrant energy, right? Right, right. To, to then share or to share, oh, wow, this is what my experience was of, of getting through something um, or, or just looking at something. And, um, you know, the, I feel like we all want to just be able to connect and be of service in some way. You know, why else be here, really? Um, yeah, that's all I want to cool. say. Cool. Awesome. And I'll be sure to uh, put links also in the show notes to these movies that are coming out. And um, that Udo Kier one, I, I got some press info on that. It looks really fascinating and interesting. I'm especially interested. But yeah, I love genre. I love comedy. I love horror and all that stuff. So all the places you're playing in are definitely super interesting to, to me and, and the listeners as well. So yeah. So thank you so much for being on the podcast, Jonah. Thank you, Heidi. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye.